welcome to week three of our 2022 challenges. Um, hopefully you're enjoying this um, slightly beginner friendly challenge series. So what we're doing is we're bringing in the same data set as the first two weeks. So that's this one here. We've been told by the requirements that we don't require any of the parental contact information. So I've just uh, deselected those four fields um, in the input step. And now this is the now familiar data set that we've been using for the past couple of weeks. Additionally, we have another data set and that is telling us the scores of each of the students um, for a variety of different subjects. So um, I've done this challenge in a slightly different order to the requirements, but I thought it'd be a good opportunity to say that it doesn't matter the order that you do uh, the prep steps in, sometimes they're not uh, sequential steps that you have to take. Um, so working out the best flow for you is perfectly acceptable. Okay, so I decided that I wanted to pivot my data, my subject data, before I joined up to my student data. So I added a pivot step and I'm on the columns to rows pivot, which is its default. And basically I picked up each of those fields for the subjects and dragged them over to this pivot one values section. And then we have our student. I renamed the pivot one names to be subject and the pivot one values to be score. And then I was ready to join those two data sets together. So I picked up the pivot step and I went and joined it to uh, my data set above. I made sure to apply the join clause with ID equals student ID. And then I deleted um, the ID field. So that's why you can't see it here. But I can see in my join results summary that all of my 1000 rows and all of the 7000 rows from this branch all joined together and I have 7000 rows coming out of there, which is great. Next, I wanted to create a field for whether or not a student has passed a subject. So in order to pass a subject, the score must be greater than 75. So if I just take a look at that, then I've done um, an in inline if, so that's an if statement, but you write everything on one line. So I've said if the score is greater than 75, then give it a one, otherwise give it a zero. So I thought actually if a passing mark is greater than or equal to, then possibly I might have to have a greater than or equal to sign here. Greater than or equal to 75, I wouldn't want you to fail. Yeah, if 75 is the pass mark, it should be greater than or equal to slightly uh, done the wrong logic before this. So we're giving it a one if it's greater than or equal to 75 or a zero otherwise. And the reason that I've done this rather than writing pass fail, for example, is that when we go into our aggregate step and we group by our student ID. So remember, if I wanted to change how it's going to be aggregated, I can use the drop down here and select group by, or I can simply pick it up and make sure I drop it into the group by section. So I'm grouping by my student ID and my gender. I'm averaging the score field. So to change the aggregation of score, I um, change it from a sum to an average there. And then I'm just summing up this past subjects field. So it's already a number. So I know it's just going to add together all of those um, values, all of those ones, sorry. So only going to add together past subjects. Okay. And then all that's left to do is round that student's average score to one decimal place. So I've created a new field called student's average score. Use the round function on the score with a one there, which means one decimal place. And removed the additional field and we're ready to output. OK, hopefully that was quite straightforward and hopefully you enjoyed the challenge. So thank you very much for watching and join us next week for our final uh, beginner friendly challenge.